okay good afternoon everyone yet today uh, welcome to my channel and uh, we have uh, been discussing on the training on food and beverage so today we will talk about uh, bar basics yeah so the bar basics uh, well uh, let me introduce myself uh, those who don't know my name is rajiv i'm a fnb manager and we have a certain kind of fnb trainings uh, for those who are freshers and those who are eager to learn and as well as for those who are uh, eager to refresh themselves during this period of time when uh, there's a lot of challenges going on all right so we will discuss more on bar basics today and uh, they are basically uh, basics and uh, everyone should know uh, this uh, training will take nearly about half an hour but please stay tuned until the end because whatever we will discuss you can actually uh, see it in a kind of video as such yeah so before we carry on uh, the bar basics uh, we will talk about uh, more or less what are the equipments we need to have how to set up your bar uh, when you're making a uh, garnishes which kind of garnishes you should have which kind of glasses you should have and uh, these uh, sort of things so uh, please stay tuned it will take nearly about uh, 25 to 30 minutes not more than that i will not take much of your time and stay tuned and uh, please do enjoy yeah, that's as it will be a refreshing thing and please do comment below uh, so that if you need any other additional things to that so that we can work it on as well all right so let's uh, without wasting much of time let's uh, start with our training for today all right so let's go to the bar basics we required some equipments which are really required to set up a bar now the right tools make the mixing drinks easier but some tasks simply can't be done without the right gizmo all right so that's uh, some physiology which we have used as such but that is quite true all right so we will discuss some of the uh, equipments which uh, you need to have in your bar those who are bartenders of course they it is their basic they can uh, use it as such uh, they know it but for the freshers for the people who are never worked in the bar you should know as well that there are few basic things without that thing a bartender cannot make a particular drinks because all the recipes required those uh, kind of things as such so we will discuss one by one so just stay tuned yeah now uh, the very first and the famous thing is the boston shaker a two piece set comprom uh, comprising of a mixing drink a slightly larger metal container that acts as a cover for the mixing glass for shaking cocktails and the mixing glass can be used alone for sterile drinks and which are not shaken most of the boston shakers if you go for these two piece boston shakers the glass one will be also measured with a measuring thing as such you can find in google it's it's a very easy find to find out as such but the boston shaker is very very important it's like two glasses one of metal and one of glass and most of the glass have a measurement as well so that's the boston shaker i'm talking about then we have a simple bar spoon bar, bar spoon is a long handed uh, shallow spoon with a twisted handle used for stir drinks yeah so then we have a hawthorn strainer hawthorn strainer is a perforated metal top for the metal half of a boston shaker yeah held in the place of uh, by a wire coil yeah which can be served as a strainer but, but most of the times they stain the ice and uh, that's how it's it's a round round thing as the strainer as well. then we have julep strainer perforated uh, spoon shaped strainer used in conjunction with the mixing glasses yeah so that's how the strainer is supposed to be then we have a cocktail shaker yeah a metal pitcher uh, with a tight fitted lid and uh, under which uh, uh, sits as a strainer so while styling uh, very widely the popular retro style pitcher which has a handle uh, as well as the spot that is sealed with a twist of cap yeah so that's the cocktail shaker it's a same uh, you can some people are use it as a boston shaker but it is basically a cocktail shaker it's a 
type of a glass and on top it's a covered with that which you can shake it to mix uh, drinks but there's a strainer uh, inside as such which is uh, very good to made uh, cocktails it will not stain thoroughly because we need to use a double stain we will come back to it but it is also a, can be stained for the all the ice to just to cool down your beverages as such yeah. let's carry on of course we need a electric blender and uh, we need to have absolutely necessary for made frozen rings uh, then puree fruits and even crush ice for certain recipes here yeah. so that's the electric blender is very very important as such then we have a cutting board of course either wood or plastic and it is used to cut uh, fruits uh, upon uh, for garnishes as such so everyone knows it's a just a normal chopping board or your cutting board you can say uh, a paring knife a small sharp knife to prepare the fruits for garnish yeah there's a small knife which is uh, inclined like this and you can use it for a garnishes uh, point of view of course you need a normal knife as well then we have a muddler muddler most of the times it's made out of wood so it's uh, like a wooden uh, pastel and uh, a flat end which is used to crush and combine ingredients in a serving glass or mixing glasses then we of course we need a grater uh, useful for just uh, fruits or grating nutmegs yeah it's it's a grater everybody knows about it yeah then we have a bottle opener essential to open bottles that isn't uh, twist off so we can use it as well but most of the times we don't use it we just use our hand or some uh, person to have it. there's a technique behind it. church key church key usually metal it is pointed at the end to punch holes on the top of the can while the other end is used to open bottles yeah so i will i will show you the picture of the church key it's a, it's a very kind different kind of key uh, which we can use it as such yeah so but before that let me just uh, finish it off with all the equipments as such then we got a corkscrew and there are uh, myriad style from which you choose a professional use a waiter's corkscrew uh, which looks like a pen knife and then a screw pull and or the rabbit corkscrew the uh, the wingle co uh, corkscrew found in most homes which is considered easiest to use but often destroy the cork yeah so need to be very careful how to use uh, how, which corkscrew you should have then we have a citrus trimmer a citrus trimmer essential for juicing fruits and it comes in two styles either in a stainer bowl uh, with a pointed cone on top or a wooden handle which is a cone attached to it which must be used uh, with the stainer so it's uh, basically i will show you also the what is the citrus trimmer is looks like then of course we uh, need to have a jigger in india the jiggers has been uh, issued or measured by the excise department so which is taking care of the alcohol but in other countries the jiggers are being uh, of course the and the municipality will come or the anyone is coming so they will measure it with jigger you are using as such so uh, different in different countries uh, helpful to precise measurement uh, through professional just count the ounce in a second slightly it is usually a uh, v-shaped here yeah? so that's how uh, it is so but we have a metal uh, cups uh, uh, con conjoined at the narrow end and uh, one end measuring one ounce or other is one and a half ounce something like that so it, it depends of like 60 uh, 30 then we have a f uh, 45 and 30 so something like that so it depends on jigger to jigger then we got ice bucket and scoop and tongs of course they are very useful they are need to be used uh, every time in the bar then the bar without a ice is like a car without a gas so it says use the scoop never the glass uh, to gather ice in a mixing glass or shaker so metal scoopers are really really important for the hygienic and the safety point of view of the guest so and we never use our hands because the hands are not to be put it in the eyes that's it's not also hygienic yeah so uh, tongs uh, to add single cubes uh, to a prepared ring but scoopers are the most uh, useful thing 
to be used as such. Miscellaneous, of course, we need to have a sip sticks or stirrers. And then we have a straw, we have a cocktail napkins, coasters, and cocktail picks. All right. So these all the engage uh, the basic things which we should have. Of course, the glassware is the next. We should have to actually have a bar because there are many things which are to be used. Uh, uh, to open to uh, without these all things you cannot call your bar as a bar so whenever you open the bar you should have a checklist of these things and you should buy a good quality one because they should not be rust should not become rusty so it has to be a good quality and it has to go in a very long run so which can give a very helpful character uh, to your bar as such yeah so then only your bartender can actually enjoy or you can enjoy as such so that's how it should be so then then uh, let's go to the glassware the glasswares are very important because the glasswares are the one which uh, uh, of course the drinks will be served so without the glass there is no Nothing as such. The clean polished glass show off uh, good rings to a great advantage. The best glasses should be a thin lip, transparent and sound of a high register when pinged. And practice when you do cheers as well. So it is very, very important for you to use a good glass. All right. So the five glass could be used to make most of the mixed drinks and cocktails found in this book yeah so we will talk about uh, many glasses but uh, there are different glass termed in different countries so i need to tell you in the beginning that there are a few glasses which are there which might be contradictory but it's in my sense has been used to be in a in a that manner so but every bartender is a different thing as such all right so uh, let's go to the cocktail glass uh, okay before uh, I'll, I'll just show you the pictures of some of the things which we have not been discussed before but uh, i need to uh, show you the uh, things which are okay, sugar we will uh, discuss about different kind of sugar and in, in a few days uh, in a few minutes time all right as you can see the demirara is there and then we have a light Moscovado, then we have a castor sugar, then we have a granulated sugar, then we have a dark uh, Moscovado, and uh, then we have a Demerara. So, which is a very, very uh, uh, important thing that everybody should uh, know. And then there is a soft brown as such, so which are the different kind of sugar, which everybody should use it in, in the bar. Yeah. Then let's go to, we have a elderflower. Elderflower is in India, most of the time you will find it in the roadside and we don't know what to use with that. But elderflower uh, liquor has been very popular all around the world as such. And uh, for the bartenders, it gives a, quite a boost in many drinks. Yeah, We will talk about this in, in a few minutes time church key yeah the church key looks like this so this is the church key which i was talking about about the equipments so these are the church key which uh, everyone should have in the bar which you can see the down one can be used to open a bottle and the upper one can be used to open a can so in a very easier way you doesn't have to just uh, fight with it in the time yeah opening a can as such all right let's go to the citrus uh, rimmer now citrus rimmer is the one which is uh, been uh, used uh, for many fresh juices to squeeze so uh, it can be it is looks like this with the measurement comes out here all right uh, let's go carry on with the glasses yeah it's the cocktail glass also known as a martini glass uh, typically four to eight ounce and uh, uh, but lately uh, much uh, larger as such yeah so then we got a collins glass uh, tall and narrow typically 8 to uh, 12 ounce which is a little bit bigger than the um, highball glass as such both of them are same size but the colon is a little bit bigger which is can be 12 ounce so most of the time and then highball glass is, a, is a shorter than the colon glass typically 8 to 10 ounce then we have a hurricane glass uh, which uh, is a short stem uh, it's a round kind of thing which is our uh, 
uh, stem however glass shaped so typically 14 to 20 ounce it's a quite big quantity they, they it can uh, contain acid then we have a old-fashioned glass wide and squat typically six to eight ounce uh, good for whiskeys and good for other uh, drinks which can be have a little bit of mixed of something as such the complete inventory of glasses however would include the following yeah so we have more glasses coming up we have shot glass beer mugs beer or uh, pilsner glass irish coffee glass uh, um, uh, per se uh, cafe glass puffy glass red wine white wine sherry glass champagne flute uh, brandy glass or uh, brandy uh, sniffer cordial or pony glass then we have a whiskey sour glass yeah so whiskey sour glass will be different in many countries but i got something which is uh, i think it is uh, in my view all right so as you can see the colin glass then shot glass then highball and old fashions are there then we got your uh, pilsner beer mug irish coffee glass and Poi Cafe. Poi, ca Poi Cafe is uh, typically, uh, you can see it's uh, different with a square base as such. Then we got uh, red wine, white wine, sherry, flute and parfait. So parfait and Poi Cafe are a little bit of contradictory but you can still find it uh, in many, many uh, classic bars as such. Then we have got brandy sniffer, then cocktail and cordial and pony glass uh, cordial glass is quite small as such and whiskey sour which i was talking about it's different in different countries but i found it as well can it's used in many many uh, classic bars as well yeah so let's go to uh, the stocks yeah so nobody uh, have ever said stocking a home bar is easy or inexpensive <laughs> Of course, it is, uh, which is probably why so few people bother to do it. Yeah, we just get one bottle and we just happy with it. But uh, making a bar, it's uh, gonna be a little bit of in a in a expensive uh, criteria. However, if uh, you have a fray and feeling inspired by this book and make the reasonable rationalization about the money you will spend stocking your bar versus the money you will save in buying drinks in the bar here's what you will need to do it right yeah so the basically those who are uh, filling up for their home it's uh, of course need to have something as such but those who are in a situation of uh, making their own bar it's been quite challenging but you if you if you consider this thing in uh, which i will gonna discuss in the basics uh, you will uh, happy to have it in the bar as well as in your home so you will not use it as uh, uh, over the budget yeah so the budget and it will be not nothing will last long after the party goes over yeah so that's why it's this training is all about all right so have some stock ready of bitter angustra features and uh, or orange bitters to be there then i'm um, basically this bar setup is more or less uh, talking about the people of uh, not uh, generalizing the indian community but the community who has traveled abroad and they have a mix match uh, community for the different countries as such but uh, it depends on country to country whenever you're organizing a function but for a typical, uh, uh, if you uh, have uh, a mix uh, sort of clients or mix sort of friends who are coming up for a party, so these it will actually help you out to do the a lot of things as such. So, so bitters. There are three kinds of bitters. Uh, I'll want to show the three bitters. How the bitters. Uh, looks like basically yeah so these are the three bitters which looks like orange bitter is of course made out of orange and then we have uh, fee chowds bitter is a very very um, aromatic uh, bitter you can say and angustra bitter of course we are using it and we know it it's been very been uh, good to use in our tomato based cocktails or any other cocktail you want to use it as such yeah so the fresh juices which is quite required lime juice and lemon juice lime and lemon 
I hope you know the difference. Everything which is a uh, smaller one, the smaller round ones are lime. So there are different countries which are even in India, the limes are quite famous than the lemon. In many Asian countries, the limes are there. Lemons are mostly available in the European countries where the big ones with the yellow color uh, is the lemon are the one which are been quite famous. So don't be confused with lime and lemon. Do both of them taste totally differently? So there are specific cocktails which has been used to only lime. So you cannot use lemon in that. Otherwise, the taste will be totally different as such. Then we have a cranberry juice. We have pineapple juice. And we have other juices and nectars as such. Dairy, of course, you can use a milk, cream. You need to have a heavy half and half as well. So then we have a butter and eggs. Eggs, if you are not really sure about it, then you can also get a pasteurized egg mixture over there, so which is not been harmful for the, uh, which has been already, uh, there is no uh, microorganization, microorganisms in there, so it's been pasteurized, so it's very nice to have that uh, material instead of eggs, but if you're going if you're gonna use it classic and uh, you know the uh, stomach condition of your guest, of course you can use uh, eggs over here, so then we have of course sodas, we have tonic water soda, cola, lemon, lime, cordials, uh, etc. has to be kept in your inventory. Then we have some uh, uh, savory ingredients which you can use it as tomato juice, clam juice, horseradish, hot sauce like Tabasco or any kind of thing which you will find and Worcester sour sauce. Then sweetening ingredients, uh, simple syrup, you need to make it over there. Simple syrup is uh, also able to buy it but I would recommend to make it in house which will be an equal part of water and uh, granulated sugar heated over a flame and then contains cooled and stored in the refrigerator until needed. You can also put a uh, one or two slices of lime or lemon in there so which can actually give a good aroma for the things for the simple syrup. Garnishes uh, of course the lemon wedges, lime wedges, assorted fruit wheels, uh, pineapple chunks uh, and uh, maraschino cherries of course are there olives celery and uh, fresh herbs like mint and basil has to be kept it there so it's uh, something like which you need to keep your in, in your inventory otherwise at the end you will end up nothing as uh, then we have also a uh, super fine sugar granulated sugar coconut cream various uh, fruit syrups uh, or get or elder flower we just uh, show the picture as such and then we have a granadine syrup so which is uh, quite been important to keep it in your inventory and you're having a basic bars as such then we go to the glasses now the glasses which we are serving is the good technique to have a very chilled glass to be given to the guest because uh, many time what happen you uh, take a glass is uh, straight away from the uh, your washing area you wipe it and you give it nicely but still the temperature remains there so you have to chill the glass i'll tell you how to chill the glass in a very uh, uh, simple way and it will actually work it out well for you so always chill before you film there are two ways to make a cocktail glass cold. Uh, put the glass in the refrigerator or a ref a freezer a couple of hours before using them. Fill the glasses with uh, ice and water. Stir and then discard the drink uh, when it's ready. So just ice and water, just put it in the glass. Keep it for a time and then throw it that temperature of the glass is cools down yeah so the same thing happens say when you're serving a beer do not serve a beer in a warm glass you need to make it chill most of the hotels uh, most of the restaurants uh, uh, they keep their uh, beer glasses in the freezer only so they, it will be chilled all the time so, so it's a very good thing to have it as such <coughs> sorry how to frost a glass yeah that's a different kind of thing there are some drinks which are being totally been frosted like the ice has to be there so there are two types of frosting 
frosted glasses for frosted uh, drinks glasses so it should be stored in a refrigerator <coughs> Yeah, so it is uh, very, very useful. Just a minute, guys. All right, let's carry on. Okay, the, there are two types of frosted glasses. For frosted drinks, glasses should be stored in a refrigerator or buried in a shaved ice for a very long time. Yeah, so that each glass would be white, frosted, and ice cold looks and feels. Yeah, so that's uh, one type of frosted and other is sugar frosted glass. Now sugar frosted glass is just the rim of the glass which has been uh, frosted as such. So moist the rim with the chilled uh, um, of a pre-chilled glass with the lime or lemon and then dip the rim with a powdered sugar and keep it in the fridge. It will be totally frosted. So that's the way you should have. For margaritas, rub the rim glass with the lime, invert the glass and dip it in a coarse salt. Yeah, so there it goes. Yeah, so salt and sugar. It depends on what you wanna use it as such. Yeah. So then we got how to muddle. Every people has a different way of muddling, but uh, the muddling is a simple mashing technique for a grinding hub such as mint. Smooth the bottom of the glass. You can buy a wooden muddler in a bar supply store. Yeah, it crushes the herbs uh, much as the blunt hands uh, for a wooden spoon might without scaring your glassware. Some of the things which you cannot blend, you just need to squeeze the lemon from the things. You need to just take out the uh, flavor of the mint. Yeah, so you if you blend it, it will break. So you don't want to break it as well. You just need to take out the things as such. So that type is you have to muddle it. Yeah. So to stir or not to stir. Yeah. Picture of cocktails need at least 10 seconds of stirring of mix properly. However, carbonated mixtures of drinks do not uh, do much of their own stirring just by naturally bubbling. So two stir is, is fine, it's just complete the job. But other than that, you need to stir it at least for 10 seconds. Otherwise, it will not be mixed properly. Okay, so when to shake? Shake any drink uh, made with juices, sugar, <coughs> sorry, cream or use an electric blender. So depends on which one you are using, then strain the cocktails from the shaker or blender to a glass through a coirin stainer, which we discussed before, as such, which has been in the Boston shaker, we have a, to have a coirin stainer as such, so which can uh, help you out to remove the glasses and the other ingredients which are there. If you are not doing a double stain, but double stain, there are many people are using muslin cloth, there are many using a just a tea stainer. Yeah, so that's how it is. <clears throat> Let's go to the pouring. Pour drinks as soon as you make them or they will wilt. So make sure that the pouring happens immediately after you make it. Especially if you are making a pina colada, it has to be drink, it has to go to the guest straight away. Yeah, otherwise the fraud, the, the blend of you make it so nice over there and it just goes off. So you need to be very careful when you are making a drink. It has to be given in the very same time. So that's very important. And uh, the leftovers should be discarded or they will be too diluted by the time you get it to two seconds. Yeah, so that's when making a batch of drinks at once, set up the glasses in a row. Pour until each glass is half filled, then come back and then backtrack until the shaker is empty. Yeah, so that's how if you are making for a big batch, <coughs> all glasses, half, 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 then make it again. So that way everyone get the same amount and same taste. That's very important. Alright. So. 
let's go to the floating liquids yeah floating liquors of course b52 is our very famous thing <coughs> how to make it yeah so creating a rainbow effect in a glass with different colored cordials required a special pouring technique simply pour each liquor slowly over an inverted teaspoon rounded side up into a glass so spoon take it upside down pour it nicely and it will but you need to know which is the thicker one has to or heavier one has to come in the bottom then the medium light and then the lighter one on top so you have to know if you don't know you can search it and you can ask your head bartender to have it as such the round surface of the spoon will spread each liquor over one beneath without mixing that you can accomplish the same trick over the glass rod as well and pour slowly down the rod yeah so that's how the picture is which you can see and you can enjoy as well <coughs> yeah now we will go a very interesting part which is the flaming now the flaming the secret of setting brandy or other high alcohol spirits of flame is the first to warm it and its glass until almost hot then you can warm the glass by holding it <coughs> okay so i'll not go in this i'll just uh, tell you in a simple way you have a glass you have a liquor you need to make it flame first of all <coughs> keep uh baking soda on the side yeah the baking soda is basically whenever you're doing a flaming you need to have a baking soda i will tell you why after some time <coughs> okay so now you have a glass you heat the glass uh, with a electric heater or you have a lighter you heat the glass without touching the glass otherwise it will break then you warm the liquid which is the brandy warm the brandy in a different pan like 2 to 4 ounces of brandy in a saucepan not the whole thing as such so the brandy should be hot if it's hot it ignite very well and very fast if it's so hot enough then flame instantly so pour the flaming liquid carefully into uh, the other brandy you want to flame yeah so the drink is ready put the brandy on top and with the glass and just flame it on top with the help of a matchbox and don't use the lighter at the time but a matchbox is much better because it gives a distance from your finger as such <coughs> now if you can see this warning which is mentioned there yeah the flames can shoot high suddenly so look up and be sure nothing in the root which can ignite other than the brandy that includes your hairs have a open box of baking soda handy in case of accidents pour it over to the flame to extinguish that yeah so you don't have to run and get the thing get the fire extinguisher if you got a, an accident by chance have a baking soda and just pour it there it will stop it in, instantly so use the pot holders to protect your hands and the, from the hot glass and spoon and pan so that's how it should be all right <coughs> using the fruits and the fruit juice yes whenever possible use only fresh fruits wash it the outside peel before using fruit can be cut in wedges or in slices if slices are used you should be cut into 1/4 inch thick and stick towards the center to fix the slice on the rim of the glass yeah so from the outside take it to the center and then you fix it otherwise it will not fix right make sure the garnishes are fresh and cold and uh, because the all the garnishes which you use it should be eatable yeah but depends on uh, many places they just make a garnish of many things which are not eatable this but most of the garnishes if you are using it it has to be eatable there are few things you should remember the garnish should be the thing which is used in the drink if you are not using a apple 
or apple uh, juice in your drink it should not have a apple as a garnish that's very important so when mixing drinks containing a fruit juice always pour the liquor last yeah very 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 important squeeze and strain fruit juice just before using to ensure the freshness and good taste avoid artificial and concentrated concentrated substitutes when recipe called for a twist of a lemon peel rub the narrow side or the peel around the rim of the glass to deposit the oil and then twist it so that one drop can follow so then uh, the lemon oil gives the added character to the drink so that's very very important yeah similar like that how the person is doing all right now opening a champagne on a sparkling wine yeah that's a very very uh, different kind of thing but uh, all the bartenders should know how to open a champagne or a sparkling wine when the bottle is well chilled i'll give you a small trick in uh, next sessions in upcoming session if you got a chance i will also show you how to open a bottle of champagne or a sparkling wine as such so wrap it with a clean towel when uh, undo the wire from the cork holding it uh, and pointing it to the bottle away from the people and uh, of course the priceless objects hold the cork in one hand grasp the bottle and then twist the bottle not the cork that's the most important thing yeah twist the indica uh, in what is that in indention on the bottle and slowly turn the bottle on to the cork yeah so until the cork comes free with a pop yeah then soar slowly into the center of the glass as it shows here yeah so please do not twist the cork always twist the bottle which will actually make you more professional then you are just twisting the cork as such very very no not the I opening a wine I am sure everybody knows it uh, cut the seal neatly around the neck and uh, with the sharp knife just uh, below the top peel off exposing the cork wipe off the cork and the bottle lip insert the cork screw and until uh, the cork screw is completely inside the cork then with a steady pull remove the cork if the cork crumbles or breaks pour the wine through a tea strainer <coughs> yeah that's this sentence you should remember if it's broke then you should pour the wine with the tea strainer until another container for the serving yeah simple do not <laughs> throw the wine yeah the host and the hostess should taste first and to check the quality and then offer to the other guest yeah so that's how it should be simple method is shown but now i will tell you in few these two pages you should be very careful and at the end of the session i have a small things uh, to present to you so please stay tuned uh, tune because we will have some uh, visuality because we are only looking around we are not doing anything yeah we are just listening so listening does not work so we will have some visuality so which you will be able to understand what exactly i am talking about okay let's uh, talk about serving a crowd first here yeah. so it's very difficult sometimes if a bartender is just working in the bar and suddenly you put it in the banquet or a big uh, dinner event it's very important for him to understand and do the things properly so first you need to plan yourself so whether you are hosting any shit or intimate dinner uh, or throwing a bash of crowd the buying guide charts in this section can make it easy for you to determine how much liquor and wine you will need so this is very very important so please go through it and i am doing it for you guys so how many drinks to plan okay for four people our uh, six cocktails or the wine will be there for the lunch time i have divided it into lunch cocktail dinner and evening as well so that's how it should be so we should prepare firstly we are preparing for the drinks only yeah 
so for the lunch time if there is a lunch six cocktails or the wine will be enough for four people or six glasses of wine with the lunch and four liquors will be enough so that's how it should be then if it is a six people 10 cocktails uh, 10 glasses of wine and six liquors then if you are 10 people then 15 cocktails and 15 glasses of wine during lunch and then 10 liquors yeah so if it's a cocktail party yeah so during the cocktail you should have uh, eight cocktails for four people or sorry or eight glasses of wines for the first two hours yeah then afterwards it should be calculated as six drinks an hour thereafter for six people you should have 12 cocktails or 12 glasses for first two hours and then nine hours afterwards then for 10 people you should have a 20 cocktails or 20 glasses for the first two hours and the 15 drinks uh, an hour later so depends on how many hours you want to continue the cocktail so but this is the normal formula which i would suggest if you want to throw a party and if you want to if you are in a party and they are planning to do that so you should order the cocktails uh, likewise the drinks likewise if it's a dinner uh, so the eight cocktails or wines uh, for four people then uh, goes to eight glasses of wines with the dinner then we got four liquors and four drinks an hour after dinner that goes normally then afterwards it's a if it's a six people so you should have a 12 cocktails uh, or 12 uh, glasses with the dinner then we have six liquors and the six drinks an hour um, after dinner so these are the people who are actually drinks yeah so you should know how many people are drinking in the crowd so in that one approximately you should order somewhere like this for 10 people you should have a 20 cocktail or wines means pre dinner then you have a 20 glasses of wines with the dinner and 10 liquors should be there after dinner and the 10 drinks to be after dinner as such if you have an evening event then 16 cocktails of the wines will be enough and uh, for four people because it's only in the evening they will not have dinner so then we have 24 cocktails if in the there are 12 uh, there are six people and for the 10 people you should have a 40 cocktails or wines ready with you all right, so let's go to the bottle of wine to be ordered as such. So uh, wines uh, is basically uh, which you should be considering more or less uh, one or two, which is very, very important. And then we will talk about the liquors which we are ordering as such. So wines for the four people because average of two servings are there. So four people, um, if it's a... Uh, 750 ml bottle you should order for two if it's a six people you can offer for two or three if it's a eight people you can go for three plus or three to four ten people for four bottles will be enough twelve people five bottles will be enough twenty people that eight bottles will be enough 1.5 liter is quite uh, not being visible here but just in case if you want you can go ahead with that as well if you find it in uh, your country uh, in India, if you find it here, so just go for for four people, one uh, bottle will be enough. For six people, one and a half or two. Eight people, two. Uh, ten is two and twelve is two to three. Twenty-four bottles will be enough. Generally, bottle quantity recommend provided some small average of wines uh, over ten ounce per guest formula. Plus indicates the somewhat a less formula or you may desire to have additional bottle in hand so that's how it is okay now goes for the main thing which is the last part but very very important yeah we'll go for a sparkling for just touching the sparkling but for the cocktails or the mixed drinks uh, 1.5 ounce liquor serving that means 45 to 46 ml of uh, liquor because in most of the cocktails 45 ml but um, that's why I calculated over here so which you will find a 750 ml bottle uh, 16 uh, will be enough for one person uh, one bottle will make a 16 uh, two bottles will make 33 four bottles uh, will make uh, 67 so six bottles will make 110 Cocktails, uh, 8 bottles will make 135 cocktails and 10 bottles will make 169 
and 12 bottles will make 203. So uh, then if it goes a liter, because sometimes the Bacardi comes in a different uh, uh, liter or it's a different kind of uh, liquor you're ordering, not the liquor, it's a straight drinks I'm talking about, uh, spirits. So if it's the liter, you can go accordingly 22, 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, or 270. A simple calculation which can be made from each bottle of a liter uh, in case of rum in case of whiskey uh, so something like that depends on how many whiskey drinkers uh, cocktails you have 115 goes accordingly 39 78 157 236 315 394 and 473 all right let's go to the last part the sparkling which we should order for the people now everyone knows that a five ounce wine serving will be there so it's like uh, in 750 ml five glasses will made so uh, depends on that so how many you want to order you can order it accordingly i just uh, go for the liter one also because if it's uh, 12 bottles it will make 81 if it's a 1.5 liter bottle for 12 it make 121 and the four liter ones you will not find it much but in in uh, if a uh, good functions as well so if it's a uh, four liter crystal bottles are coming up then you should recommend if it's a uh, 300 plus guest so you can go for 12 bottles okay yeah so that's how the thing is before i end up the session i hope uh, most of the things are clear but I want to show you something which is quite bit interesting and I hope you will enjoy it over there. Yeah, so which covers everything and afterwards I will rest my uh, training and hopefully you will all take it in a very good way. to award the Wine Star for 2016 Mixologist of the Year to Lynette Marrero. It's a great honor to be recognized within this beverage industry. Spirit is an all-women's bartending competition that raises money for breast cancer. And we've raised a million dollars to date globally for research and education. So I have an original bar which was called White Lion that tried to look at the idea of sustainability in the world of cocktails. Also had a bar called Dan Lion which was named World's Best Bar. And we evolved that into a new venue called Lioness. I'm a native New Yorker, which means my parents were born in Puerto Rico and I was born in New York. And what they brought with them was the culture and hospitality of the island. I love working with food and I love working with chefs and how you can be inspired by other ingredients is really important to how I developed my philosophy. We helped bring back some esoteric ingredients that had fallen out of fashion, which now are in all the classic cocktails and top bars. So over the years, I've kind of done some pretty weird and wonderful things. I've been a fan of using some kind of unusual ingredients, rare ingredients. We've developed different techniques, different ways of processing ingredients, things that really help push our boundaries of, of what our tastes can be and, and what our comfort zones can be. All right, so these are the things which they have used it as such. And uh, I would say, please do have a look in the things which they have used. And it is a very nice uh, thing which everybody give me a time today. And hopefully you have get something out of it for today's training. Yeah, so thank you very much uh, for everyone. If you need some more trainings like that, please do communicate with me uh, so that myself and my hotel can able to organize a training for you and your organization as such. Yeah, so thank you and have a nice day and we'll see you again. Bye. Thanks.